Can you imagine it? To photograph autumn scholars, the Milky Way and the golden light with immense peaks, stunning rock formations, iconic churches, vast meadow, sparkling lakes and iconic mountains? With Marco Grassi and Jessica Lancia and Antoni Cladera? Can you imagine it? Well, this is what we try to accomplish in our 7-day Four Wheels Expedition to the Dolomites, one of the most spectacular landscapes on the planet. Hello, Four Pillars, Rafael Mar here from the Dolomites. The Dolomites are located in the north of Italy, at about 2 hours drive from Venice. It's a vast area, a land of contrasts. One day, you're in the mountains photographing incredible rock formations, and the next day, you're in a valley photographing beautiful churches and iconic mountain huts, or having pizza with a couple of friends. But let's keep this video going, because this is the story of a bunch of brave photo pillars going up and down the Dolomites chasing legendary photos. By the way, if you wish to join one of our expeditions, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter. It's where we announce and sell all the Photobills expeditions and the Photobills scan. I'm gonna leave a link to the newsletter in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Everything began in Venice, so Uncle Tony and I had a lobster paella at Café Balear, our favorite restaurant in Menorca, we went to a concert of our favorite rock band, Stop Stop. <laughs> And then is here we go. By the way, I tested the Fro Pills Moon AR Meta Reality on a plane and worked as a charm. This was my first time in Venice, and I didn't realize how many towers they have that can be aligned with the moon. This is paradise for a moon photographer. We arrived at Venice two days before the expedition, so we explored the city. We met with Fran, who was joining the expedition to the Dolomites, and planned a few shots. The first one, the sun rising next to the Basilica di Santa Maria della Salute from Ponte dell'Accademia. Here you have the Frobil's plan, where the red pin points out the shooting spot, and here you can visualize the shot through the Almeta Reality view. And the next morning, we got the shot. Well, we're not the only ones that got the shot that morning. But I don't want to bore you with our days in Venice. We ate pizza, lots of pizza, we saw beautiful things, lots of beautiful things, and we took photos, lots of photos. But above all, we had fun trying to lock our bedroom door. Okay, this video is about the Dolomites, so let's go to the mountains. Our first destination was Portiseri, which is at 258 kilometers from Venice Marco Polo Airport. It takes a bit more than three hours to get there. So we stopped for lunch at a beautiful place in the mountains. Here we had our first traditional meal, the polenta and desserts, lots of desserts, and contemplated a few amazing cars. There are lots of fancy cars in the Dolomites. On the first day, we had planned a very special moonshot, and it was a bit cloudy, so plan and pray. The idea was to photograph the full moon rising next to Furqueta. The shooting spot was located at 19.5 kilometers from Furqueta, and the moon had an apparent diameter of 184.5 meters, pretty big. Here you see the moon rising at the desired spot through the photobills of Meta Reality View. So we planted our tripods on the plan, shoot the spot, and waited and waited. And it got clouded and clouded. But suddenly. Whoa! <laughs> the moon, Tony! I'm Jessica! This is the Incredible! Oh my god! Oh my god! Like, Tony, you're cheating! Yeah! <laughs> The moon appeared right where we wanted, next to Furqueta, and we started shooting like crazy till the moon hid behind the mountains. And for a few seconds, the moon appeared again, but this time above the mountains. This is the first shot we got, and this is the second one with much less light. And to celebrate, desserts, lots of desserts, yummy. For sunrise, we chose Alpe de Suze for its beautiful green meadows, huts, and mountains. We plan to have the sun rising next to the pit of Sassolungo, but the clouds were too thick, so we spent the morning taking photos of the moody landscapes. What a beautiful place! After Alfred is you see, we photographed the beautiful church of San Nicolaus Kirche 
and the stunning Pyramid di Terra di Longomoso. Yes, you also play hoodoos in the bubble lights. In the afternoon, we will photograph the sunset with the church of South Palatine, the church in the foreground, and the mountain of Silarp. According to our plan, the sun was setting on the right hand side of the sea. All we have to do was to wait and enjoy the sea. <laughs> Our secret day wake up very early to get to one of my favorite places in the Dolomites, Secheda. The view up here is stunning. Good morning everyone, we made it to Secheda, waiting for the sun to rise. Next to it, it's gonna be an awesome, awesome morning. Have a bit of clouds, but the horizon looks promising. And Secheda, what a wonderful location. Let me show you the plan for this morning. Okay, okay, this is the plan. We're standing here in Secheda, at the right wing position. This is our rock formation, and the sun will be rising on the right hand side. Let me show you the yard. Visualize the composition and the sun, right? Let me check here if everything looks good. I think so. Yeah. Beautiful rock formation. The sun rising over there. The horizon looks promising too. We have clouds. So, if you're lucky, it's gonna be an amazing sunrise. Can't wait, can't wait. Everybody's ready for action here. The danger is that. Nice. And the sun rose as planned. Here comes the sun, Jessica. Here comes the sun. <laughs> Here comes the sun. And after sunrise, surprise, surprise, we enjoyed a delicious breakfast in a fantastic place. What helps? After an editing class with Marco Grassi and for Bill's class, we went to photograph the Chiesa di San Giovanni. And we were lucky enough, the clouds allowed us to see the mountain peaks of Fulgeta and Sasriga is at the back. And afterwards, we hiked up the hill to photograph the Chiesa di Santa Maddalena and the mountain. The sun was about to set in the west on the right hand side of the sea. And suddenly, light came, changing everything. First, the golden light hit the little church and the valley. We couldn't believe our eyes how beautiful the scene was. Later, light abandoned the valley and started hitting the mountains until they were completely on fire. I'm not gonna lie to you, we had a blast. No clouds and a shining moon in the sky at Paso Sella, our first Paso of the day. The landscape here is just beautiful. As the sun started to leave the top of the mountains, the moon was getting into place. The peaks were catching more and more light, and I was moving around to find the right composition, till I find the spot to get the moon where I wanted right in the crack. I just love this moon shot, and Marco liked his shot too. We just got the moon here, Paso Sella. And even detail on the moon, huh? Here it is. Nice location, Marco. Job done and off to the hotel where a delicious breakfast awaited. To get to our second pass of the day, we had to change our base camp to Cortina, which is at 1 hour and 30 minutes from Ortice. Not far from Cortina, there is uh, the always stunning Paso Giao, our spot for sunset. When we got there, the sky was covered by low clouds, but we saw an opening and the horizon that gave us hope. The sun was slowly getting below the clouds. It was slowly getting in place as planned, providing light from the side. And light began to fall on the landscape in front of us. Light was all over the place surrounding us. What a day, our lucky day. 
Now the bumpy morning begins. We're going to cross the Dalago, a small mountain group in the central Dolomites. With a height of 2,750 meters, Cima d'Ambrezzola is the highest peak. At the foot of the mountain, we find Lago Federa, which added a lot of interest to our compositions. The whole area seems to come to life when the surrounding valleys explode in gold and orange tones. Tones that, with a bit of morning golden light, would surely pop. And yes, they popped. The whole peak, the reflection, and the autumn colors mix for a perfect sunrise. After quick lunch and siesta, we started hiking in the mist towards Trecime. When we got there, the three majestic peaks were partially covered by clouds. So we moved to the right of the rock formation to have a better view of the whole thing. It's really impressive. Look at the scale here, the peaks are super tall. While everyone was photographing the sunset, I had a look at the Milky Way position for the night. It looked promising. And we all enjoyed the beautiful sunset here. Marco prepared the circle and camping dinner for all of us, and the night was coming, and so were the clouds. And we took a few good dramatic photos of the chime and the moonlight. But no Milky Way. Just a few stars during the astronomical twilight. The sky was completely covered at night. We'll have to come back. Cadiri di Nisiorina is a true labyrinth of needles. The mountain group is extremely irregular, with a rugged appearance backed with sharp peaks. Its highest peak is Shima Cadini di San Lugano, with an altitude of 2839 meters. And there we were once again, passionately waiting for the sun to rise. When the first pinks and oranges appeared at the horizon, the peaks at our back started to catch light, and the needles in front of us. Suddenly, the morning came to life. Jessica kindly paused for us to give a sense of scale to our shot. The job was done, and we were ready to depart. In the afternoon, we visited another stunning location. On the way up, the views were just magnificent. It only takes a 30 minutes hike up to Cinque Torri, a dolomite rock formation formed by five towers. Torre Grande being the highest one with 2,361 meters. But apart from the main towers, there are other interesting subjects here. We patiently waiting for the sun to set next to Torre Grande. For the girls couldn't get it wrong, but luck was not on our side this time. We didn't get to see the sun or its golden light. So we took a few cool dramatic shots and quickly left before the rain arrived. One thing I love about the Dolomites are its lakes surrounded by massive mountains. Lago Antorno is a pretty small lake where you can enjoy the reflections of Trecime. And obviously it's a bonus if you can capture the reflections at sunrise when the peaks are bleed. Not far away from Lago Atorno, we find Lago Misurina, a much larger lake. We stop here to take an iconic shot of the reflection of San Bernardo Opera di Ocesan Rehabilitation Center, with the Serapis group towering behind it. But no reflections for us that day. So we continued our adventure towards our last destination, San Martino di Castrozza. On our way, we stop for another iconic shot, a drone shot. Capturing the sinuous roads of the Dolomites is so much fun. Also, we start to photograph the iconic Chiesa di Colle Santa Lucia and the breathtaking view of the Belmo and Civella mountains of the Veneto Dolomite. And finally, we go to our third lake of the day, 
Lago Baita Sagantini. This is one of the best spots for sunset and sunrise photography. Here we enjoy one of the best known peaks in Dolomites, Cimon de la Palla, with a height of 3,184 meters. But we are not lucky at all with light at sunset, so we decided to come back the following morning to play our luck for sunrise. But before, we enjoyed our last dinner in the Dolomites, and of course, we took a group photo. And here we go again, chasing our last sunrise in the Dolomites. This time, we hiked up a little bit more to get the spectacular Chibon de la Pala standing tall in front of us. I fell in love with the view up there. The photos expedition is crazy. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely mind blowing. What a great time we had in Dolomites, so many photos, so many moments, so many friends. Yes, this is the end of the story, a story of how a few brave photo pillars went up and down the Dolomites to shoot legendary photos. Now, again, if you wish to join one of our expeditions, I recommend you to join our newsletter. It's the place where we announce and sell all the spots. I'm gonna leave a link to the newsletter in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Also, if you wish to improve your photography, I recommend you to read and download our super detailed photography guides. You'll find a link to the guides in the description of this video and the first comment below too. And as always, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, they have the power to imagine, plan, shoot, legendary photos. Bye. Well, I'm free. I'm free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tasty. Yes, rico, 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 rico. Did she have some wine? Rico, rico, rico. I think so. He eat it. Marco, what do you think? I don't know. You're gonna return the ring. Because today I was thinking it's the last day, but then here we are. See, I'm here. It's not over yet. It's not over. My grades. My grades. My grades. Wow. You see? Ah. The last drop. He was recording Michael. <laughs>